Good afternoon, welcome to Burn Burn House Trust. Um, my name's Kate um, and I work in the gardens here and we've got Sarah here from Kitchen 44. Hi! Um, today we're going to show you how to prepare a delicious uh, leek and tatty frittata. I'm going to hand you over to Sarah because she is the chef and she's going to talk you through the first wee steps. Hi, right, we're just going to do a couple of things first of all to get things underway and then Kate is going to take you through to the garden. So if I could get you first of all to put some cold water in a saucepan, um, we're going to boil some potatoes, so some, uh, some salted water would be good if, uh, if you eat salt in your diet. It does make a difference, I promise you. So if you get that on um, and start to get it up to temperature, we are going to start by just chopping our potatoes. Now, it might seem strange to say, but water is actually an enemy of a decent potato. So we want to try um, to cut these into chunks small enough to cook in the time that we have today. We'll cut them down smaller once they're cooked. Um, but we want to try to, to minimise the surface area. So if you can see, I've got a decent sized chunk of potato. Um, and we're going to drop that into the cold water. Which is starting to warm. How many people have we got? 35. 35. Well, hello. Pleased to see you all. We'll get these on and ideally you would have a saucepan lid but uh, while packing today I did not pack a saucepan lid so I'm going to improvise and I will be topping the potatoes off with a plate. I'm going to get Kate's potatoes in here as well. We're just going to boil the potatoes once. Um, we're not going to take them to completely boiled but probably towards close to you. Um, so not quite just parboiled. We're not looking to just take the edge off them. Um, so by the time Kate has taken you to the garden to pick a leek, we should have our potatoes boiling um, and I will see you in a moment. Okay, right. So there's some volume clocks there, you're going to make sure that it's cut all the way up, uh, the volume. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, oh. Yeah, so you can see, uh, hear the volume. Ah, uh, they want to hear us as well as see us. All right, Oh, okay. no, on it all. Okay, so we're going to head into the garden and pick ourselves a leek. And all the leeks are picked this morning, so pretty much as fresh as you can get. And straight into the sunshine. And so these leeks were sown um, early in March and were planted out probably uh, a month later when they were really, really quite tiny, uh, pencil thin seedlings and we dipped them into the ground and they've been growing there ever since and this is actually the first harvest of them and we've got them in a fruit cage not because of the birds but just because we're troubled with rabbits let me just get in and give Ross enough space to get in too oops so here's our patch of leeks and they started off as tiny 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 wee seeds here just really like grains of like, well, they're leek seeds, but they look as big as sort of nigella seeds or poppy seeds. And as I say, they were sown and then planted out when they were sort of pencil thick. And here's one of our leek patches here. So we lifted leeks from here this morning and I'm gonna lift, this one looks quite nice. Now I wasn't clever enough to leave my barrow here, so I'm gonna be really naughty and just leave all the debris here. I'm gonna chop the roots off and I'm actually going to just strip down the outer leaves. Um, I'm going to take one more off. I'm going to take one more off. And I'm going to also leave, you can see you've got a nice white stem, but we've also got an awful lot of green top, which is quite nice to eat, but we don't need to eat all of it for now. And I will have to come back. Actually, we could probably take this lot to the compost heap as we head back to Sarah. So we're going to head back the ways with one leak. This is where your leeks all came from this morning. Ross isn't going to trip over the last cabbage. I am. You are? <laughs> I didn't saw the cabbage. No, you saw it. You avoided it. Brilliant. Oh, good, good, good. You did. I didn't kill the cabbage. You didn't kill the cabbage. So we'll go back this way via the compost heap. 
really filled up this morning with all these leak tops. Oh, a, a shoot round. Straight into the sunshine. Bird's eye view. So quiet this time of day. Did you get a shot of the ducat as well? That looks really pretty. So let's go back see if our tatties are boiling. This is our compost heap here. Cleared out one of the polytunnels this morning from tomatoes. So all that really great compost will go to feed the soil next year and help grow more crops like this. So let's head back the ways. I'm going to give you the dirty leak. Sorry, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you very much. I've got one more in the cottage, Thank which I might just quickly much. grab, just in case. Right, I'm going to take the worst of uh, of the dirt off. And in actual fact, I am just going to clean the, the bottom part of the leak. So I'm going to give this a quick rinse, trying to get water down into the leak. I'll turn my potatoes down and you actually want to turn your potatoes down so that they're not boil boiling really really hard. Boiling really hard potatoes will start to knock against each other and as they knock against each other they will damage each other just slightly and the damaged parts will absorb too much water which is something you want to avoid. Now this is easier if you have a tap because you can obviously <laughs> run the tap down into the leak. Um, now these are nice small leaks so we're going to use all of it um, if you have a larger leak I would uh, I'd recommend you, you would just use a half of it um, but part of the reason today that we're using a dish with potatoes in it um, is because we're looking to talk about food waste and leftover boiled potatoes is something that's quite common in my house I don't imagine that we're alone um, and one of the great things about a frittata is that you can make it with so many different things. Um, if you have uh, any type of leftover veg, um, mushrooms are fantastic. Um, any small type um, or small portion, sorry, of veg can be added in and you really can, you can mix it up. Um, anything that you like. Um, as I'm looking through this, um, there's actually not really much dirt got down into the bottom of it. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yes, yes, so I'm actually quite happy with that. You've chopped it really quite finely. You chopped it in half first. I chopped then, it in and half then, and then right, cut cut the moons. Too. Yes. And then cut as fine as you can. Yes. Okay. We um we're gonna fry them off um to obviously soften them, but leeks are a little bit tougher than onions. Okay. Um, same family in the in the garden. Yes, so, in the garden, same uh, in family. The rotation, in the, yes, same family. Um, same sort of principles. Yeah. Slightly bitter um, to eat raw, okay. and the longer you cook them, the sweeter they will get. They do get quite sweet, don't they? They can if do if you yes. really cook them long and yes. slow. And actually, what I want to try to do today is to cook this um, as long as possible. As, as long as our time allows. Yes, as long <laughs> as our time allows, yes. Okay. But we don't really have 20 minutes. No, we don't. To, 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 to slowly don't. watch our leeks. No. But the smaller you cut them, obviously, the uh, less the, time yes. okay. you have to, uh, to cook them for. Okay. So, uh, so what's your favourite thing to put in frittata? Uh, leek and potato is an oh, actual leek and potato. It, it is your favourite yes, thing? Yes. Okay, and well, for leftovers, would you even go like sort of, you could chuck anything in? Absolutely anything. Crochets, okay. yes. crochets, frozen peas. Oh, frozen peas, yes. Frozen peas are yes, amazing. that's a really quick thing. So pea it? and potato, um, courgette and pea, mm -hmm. um, even pea and cheese by itself is a... Pea and cheese. Pea and cheese. Sorry, cube the potatoes. Oh. Oh, right. Okay, cube the potatoes, please. Sorry. I, I, yeah. I, um, okay, so. If I can give you an idea. Uh, your knife's just going in or is really quite 
I was just going to try to get one out so that I could give oh, you an idea please. of the size. There you go. Ah, yeah. Yeah, that's the size of ours. So not too small. But if you're putting them in now, um, you're you're slightly behind us, so you might go just want to go just a tiny bit smaller. Has my volume gone up? Can people hear me? Yes, yes we got some yes. thumbs up. That's Perfect. Good. Perfect. So how much more are we cutting that? Was your knife going in there? It was starting to go in. Okay, um, so a yes, bit more. Yes. We're obviously, um, we're fighting the fact that we're cooking outside. Outside, yes. So these guys are inside. They're you're inside. And your, your kitchen <laughs> isn't getting woofed away. Yes. Your kitchen, I imagine, is slightly cosier yes. <laughs> than, the, than the, the, the alleyway. Yes. I am um, here today. But they don't have the sunshine. Look at that beautiful I know. lime tree. I know. Looking golden in the sun. Yep don't quite have that view with with the threatening rather threatening rain cloud behind it but hey you know i know i know fingers kind of crossed a nice spot to cook in fingers crossed okay so so we're just going to wait for our potatoes mm -hmm. and while we are doing that we can crack our dozen eggs mm. so we're using a nine inch frying pan um okay yes nine to eleven inch nine at the bottom eleven on the outside um you can make a frittata in any sized pan, but this I, I would say is a medium sized frying pan, um, which I always use 12 eggs for. I have a larger pan that I do 18 eggs in and I have a smaller pan that I'll just do six in. We're gonna make a frittata is traditionally deep. It's not an omelette, it's a deep egg uh, dish. Um, if you have a smaller pan today, you might not want to use all 12 of the eggs. If you have a larger pan, um, you can add some eggs. We're getting ripped <laughs> upon, sorry. You can add some eggs or you can simply uh, make a, a thinner frittata, which will cook faster. So you need to bear that in mind as we're all scraping away, um, moving our egg around in the pan, that if you've got a larger pan, it will cook faster. But frittata is not, even if you don't manage to eat it all tonight, frittata keeps quite well. It's lovely cold for lunch. The it, next I, actually, day. I actually prefer a frittata cold. cold. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, me too. Oh, that's yes. really going. It is going, yes. Yeah. Um, and these so, are eggs are from just up the road. They're yes. from Eggalicious. Eggalicious. Free range yes. eggs. Free range. And uh, we have seen the eggs. Or the hens, even. The hens, the, the hens that, that laid the, the eggs. eggs. But, yeah. Yes. As local as you can get. They Great definitely to are. Local producers like that. Yes. Right. My potatoes are starting to verge on being ready. They're not quite there. Okay. Um, so if we just quickly crack all 12 of our eggs. So you'll do them all like sort of fancy dancy with what with one hand. No, no I've no. just dropped my shell in just to oh, make okay. everyone feel I'm better. Do it slowly because I slowly. don't trust myself. Yeah. Okay. Um, now these are going to be great in our compost heap. Um, we don't often have uh, eggshells into our compost heap. It's normally just uh, all the uh, trimmings from the fruit and veg that we're harvesting but eggshells will be a great addition the worms are going to love this i have also heard that eggshells are great for slugs, egg slugs. nah you know i think is, slugs is that... have kind of you know they got I, it, over that yeah they've kind of got over that i think you'd have to have an awful lot of eggshells to kind of put slugs off Oh, was that a doubler? I think I got a doubler there. Oh, did you? I've not had yeah. one yet. Yeah, but I think so. Egg Egglicious have a bit of a reputation for being a... a what, for doublers? For, oh, aha, yeah. Oh, really? Yes, yes. Ah. It so always feels like a bonus when you get a double. Okay. Right, I'm going to head back to check the potatoes. So this is also an example of a really good recipe using seasonal uh, veg, isn't it? So tatties Definitely. obviously lifted, Scottish tatties that have been lifted any time from September onwards. And uh, you'll see the really early ones, like maybe from Ayrshire and stuff, we'd have been able to get. But all the main crop stuff would have been much later in the summer. Um, and leeks, uh, commercial growers will be having leeks in the, in the shops and farm shops and supermarkets from any time from late summer onwards. All through the winter you'll be able to get uh, Scottish grown, UK grown leeks. Uh, which is good to know it is. if you're trying to cut down on food air miles. Definitely. So, 
definitely. I'm going to sneak behind you. Right. My potatoes are almost ready. I certainly wouldn't dish these up on a plate at dinner time. They've still got a bit of bite to them. But we're going to cook them just a bit further in the frittata itself. So I am going to take them off the heat. Now, obviously, in the kitchen, if you have a sink, this is slightly more straightforward. So if you can just bear with me, what I'm going to do is just fish these out. And then I'm going to get rid of the water and then I'm going to put them back in the pan because okay. we want these bone dry. Well, I can get rid of the water for you. For two reasons. One, once potatoes are cooked, they are a sponge. And if you leave them sitting even for the shortest length of time in water, they will absorb it. And uh, they'll, they'll just turn slightly soggy. And the other reason that we're going to make them bone dry is because we're actually going to fry them and water and oil. Oh, don't mix. Not a good combination. No. Now these are kestrel potatoes. Oh, you looked them up. I, I look did. Them up. Go on, I looked them up. Kestrel potatoes. Kestrel potatoes <laughs> are excellent for any type of cooking with oil. So frying oh, okay. so that or sauteing. In. Really yeah, good luck, yeah, yes, wasn't yes. it? Yes. No, yeah. you planned it, didn't you? Of course, of course. Of course, you planned it. Right, if you can get rid of that. Yeah, I will get rid of that. And, and we'll just put back. it straight back straight on the heat cake. Yes. Yeah. I think I might yes. soup up here into the thing. So we've planted quite a lot of different tatty cultivars here uh, from salady stuff like Charlotte to um, more traditional stuff like Mary's Piper, Mary's Pier and then really quite unusual stuff like pink fir apple which is all really really knobbly and really delicious if you roast it but it, you can't peel it. It's like knobbly and just the knobbliest potato you've ever seen. But this was obviously good luck that we It was really good luck. Yes. Frying. Now I am giving these quite a battering with this spoon because we're going to fry them. Yeah. Um, and one of the advantages of fried um, anything is a delicious crispy ah, outside. This is like sugaring your. It's like sugaring your roast potatoes. Your roast yes. Okay. Yes. yes. So Ross, I'm going to stand back. Yeah. And I'm going to put these potatoes um, just here. If you want to have a look inside, you can see how floury they are. Um, are you going to steam up, Ross? <laughs> are you steaming up? Looking good. Okay. Now, Kate and I, our frying pans are both non-stick. Um, what we're going to try to do is avoid, uh, avoid uh, oily frittatas. Okay. Um, so I'm going to oil the potatoes rather than oil the frying pan. Oh, I've never done that. Ah, have you not? No. See? Um, so it means we can get lovely crisp potatoes yes. um, without having... Oil swimming everywhere. Yes, because okay. what happens is, is when you put the eggs in, the eggs and the oil don't mix. So the oil... Oh, it's pushed out. It's pushed and out get, yeah, and yeah. it will sit. I have seen yes. that. Yes, yes. Right. Yep. Um, now, we've got these quite large, so I'm just going to go in with a knife. Oh, there's no, there's no little... You're not fiddling about, you're just, I'm just straight in there. Straight in there. Okay. And I'm just slicing them down to slightly smaller, crushing some of them. Yep. Because crushed potatoes are absolutely delicious. And all those wee rough edges will crisp up. Now, we want oil, but we don't want bucket loads of it. Okay, you've just got what they're just standard sunflower oil. Sunflower oil, yes, yep. yes. Um, now, if I was doing this with enough for one, this is enough potatoes for both Kate and my frittata. And in actual fact, I think it's quite a generous portion. Um, I would just use one teaspoonful, so I recommend at home, if you've just cooked the three potatoes, mm -hmm. the three smallish potatoes yep. that people got, just use a teaspoon um, of oil. Okay, so not a huge um, amount. Not a huge amount. Um, I'm just putting in slightly more than a teaspoon because there's, th there's enough for two of us. And you just want to drizzle that over the top and then just give it a stir. And that will be enough just to... Yes, just no, enough to do crisp I need it. To turn this on? You do need to turn it on. Yes, to about. Oh, it's either minimum or max. No, oh. no, just oh, if you put it, it was yeah. kind of a medium heat. Right. Yep. Um. Okay. Okay. Now the oil is just there um, to, to to crisp the potatoes up. Um, I'm actually thinking I put about a teaspoon in for the two of these. Now, 
Now, as a rough guide, we're not giving you any kind of weights or measurements for this because really it's all about just using up what it is that you have. Um, with the frittata, what you want to do is to aim to have a bit of frittata in every slice. Now, I'm just placing this out as though this is going to be its final resting place. Oh, when a bit you... of tatty in every slice? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So... Oh, I can hear it starting to sizzle. And again, just break up any smaller, or, uh, sorry, any extra or like particularly sort of large. Right, so that's enough for, for, for one frittata. Okay. Yep. If I leave that, that there, you yeah. can dish yours up. Um, and we can, we can take this to quite high for just a couple of minutes. You know, once we've got the leeks in and the eggs, we want to cook it just a bit more slowly. I'm going to use my lovely uh, fourth Valley Food and Drink uh, wooden spoon, which I believe many of you got uh, earlier in the day. And I've just done what I'm about to tell you not to do. We want to brown these, and in order to brown them, they have to be in contact with the heat. Um, so... Do you think I should put all of these in here? Shall I go for it? Go for it, go for it. Go I, can for put, it. I can put a few more in here as well. Ah, oh, so you're meaning I shouldn't be moving it around all the time. I no, need to leave it. We need to leave it. Yeah, yeah. I love it. doing that. I'm a yes. It's like yes. watch porn, uh -huh. isn't it? We all are, aren't we? It's yeah, a, it's yeah, a, a natural right. reaction. Save a bit of energy, cook a bit quicker yes. if I don't move it about. Yes. Yeah, so, right. do you know what I'm going to do is to distract you slightly? Yes, go on. I'm going to give you a fork to whisk up oh, your I've eggs. Got one. I've got one. Oh, you've got one? Oh, yeah. Wow. Um, so okay. we will start. Am I putting anything in there, salt and pepper? Or we are going to salt, salt and pepper and a bit of it. Uh, milk. Oh, whisk it first. Yeah. Till they're totally all... By the time we pour them in, what we want is a totally uniform colour. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, um, so we shouldn't be able to see the difference. No, you shouldn't be able to see the difference. Between yolks and whites. Oh, I've got a very funny coloured one there. I want to know if anybody else got a double yoker. Or was I the oh, only yeah. one? Oh, yeah. Was there yeah, any other please. double yokers? Let us know. I've lost my wooden spoon. Oh, I think my, I can smell my tatties. Yep. Pardon? Ah. ah, my wooden spoon's in the pot. Yeah, the tatties, my tatties are yes. starting to go. Yep, they're starting to get, gain a wee bit of colour. Yeah. Um, and they're not getting oily and greasy. Do you they're know not, what's, are they? No. It's like, it is like dry frying. Yes. Just, just a little bit. Just enough to add colour. You want colour because colour is flavour. Colour is flavour. Colour is flavour, yeah. You're not meant to be your eat with your eyes. Is that another one? Yes, yes, definitely. Colour is fine. But you're talking about cooking, you think if it's it, as it browns, it sort of takes on. Yes, more do you know. Te it was texture as it well. Is, guess, it's textured it? as well. It's just a more pleasant eating experience all round. Okay. Right, back to the eggs. So. I'm always astonished when you get up to 12 eggs. It just needs far more mixing than you would you would imagine. Now, eggs, when you're cooking any type of eggs, the largest part of the egg is the egg white. Um, and it, that's, um, it's protein. And any protein is always, always just a little bit tougher to eat. Um, so what we want to do is to just, as an antidote to that protein, is just add a bit of milk, which is just ever so slightly acidic. And it will help just break the protein down just a little bit. Milk is acidic. Milk is only just slightly acidic. And you don't think that that's the case because a glass of milk, if you have indigestion, yeah. um, can help offset the indigestion. But it is. Okay, it's so just, it really is just a drop. Uh, no, no, good glug. Good glug. Good glug. Glug, glug, glug. Keep glugging, keep glugging, keep yeah. glugging. I guess it is a lot of eggs. Yes, it is a lot of eggs. Yes. Keep but, glugging. Do you know what? Yeah, no, that's enough for a cup of tea. You can leave that behind. <laughs> um, I'm just stirring your potatoes for you. Thank you. Now, your induction hob is quite a bit more powerful than mine. So turn it down a wee turn bit. Turn it down just a wee bit. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, how are people getting on?
for more crypto logs, uh, just need to give us a list of what to get. Um, yes, more crypto logs. The crypto logs should be a weekly thing. A weekly? Ah, I don't know if my nerves would stand it. <laughs> and this is, of course, uh, vegetarian as well. We're it is vegetarian. Meat for this one. Yes, but it's yes. very filling with the eggs, milk, tatties. Mm -hmm. It oh, is. Oh, jeez. Oh, I think I might have to acquire another spoon. Oh, oh! You put it on the floor. I know, but you've got, got a secret cup. You've got a supply. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, salt and pepper. Right. Salt is obviously um, a contentious issue from people. Um, but uh, I eat salt and there are some things that I just couldn't consider eating without salt um, and we have two of them here I wouldn't consider eating potatoes without salt and I wouldn't eat eggs without salt now before you actually get horrified by what I'm about to do um, can we just come back to the fact that we have enough here for four Four portions adult. Of, uh -huh, yes. of four food. Four adult portions. That yes. we've got 12 eggs in here. It's a lot so, of eggs. Do you know that? That is a lot of eggs. And that's the salt I'm putting in. Do you Ooh, know? Oh, okay. That is, that is quite... It, it is, it's on the hefty side. <laughs> it the is on the hefty side. side. Um, okay. But it's salt flakes, and you wouldn't want yeah. a mountain of salt like that. If you're okay. using, if you're using pouring salt, please, absolutely not that amount. So if it was pouring salt, what sort of half a teaspoon? I would put between a quarter and a half a teaspoon. Quarter of, and a half yes. teaspoon. If it's just normal table yes. salt, yeah. Yes, but that's um, that's salt flakes, and that's the equivalent of of, of a nice yeah. heaped teaspoon. Now, one of the other things that um, into the eggs. Into the eggs, yep. Nice heat teaspoon. Nice heat okay, teaspoon. I think I've probably gone a little bit shy than what you Okay, remember. okay. I, I I do understand. <laughs> I do understand. I, I horrify oh, people. But we'll have the taste test after. We will have a taste we'll test afterwards. Tell. Yes, yes. Now if we just have a quick look at the potatoes where we've got some lovely crispy bits. I've got some good crispy bits on yes. that. Yes. Good. Yep. Not every bit and what we should have is just gorgeous fluffiness inside yeah i think i think i can see that yeah. i think that good sugar of them a good sugar makes yeah. a huge difference it does make a it? huge difference yeah. right okay butter butter is the next thing now the um, ingredient list said uh, oil, oil or, or butter, butter yes. so there's going to be some of you that don't have butter there but the reason i add butter to a leek and frittato frittata is that butter and leeks is it's a classic it's a classic yeah. it's yes do you know anything that the french they do like their butter. Um, have done for 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 centuries is butter based. <laughs> yeah, Bossons, yeah. Yes. It's all, always it's always good in my book. So again, we're we're we're, we're making essentially twelve small portions. Now, after keeping the potatoes extraordinarily dry, yeah. I've turned the heat off here. Oh, deliberate. um, deliberately. Yes. Right, do I need to turn mine off? Um, off or really right down. I've turned it off so that I can talk to you while I'm doing this because okay. butter browns really, really, really quickly in a hot pan. Um, so I need to watch it. Yes, yes. Um, you know, browned butter is still absolutely delicious and it has a, its 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 place. Um, but the reason that we've added the butter is obviously so that we can, Ooh, yes, I can see what you we mean. can get buttery leeks. Yeah. Yeah, your your hob is far more powerful than this yeah. one. So my leeks are going in now. That so butter. leeks, leeks are going in. Yep. Okay. And what we want are to coat the leeks. Coat the leeks in the butter. Yeah. Oh, it smells good. I hope everybody's got this buttery smell going on. Right, I'm going to put the heat back on. Oh, we've got a breeze. We do have a breeze. <laughs> We're going to lose all this heat. Um. And what I'm going to do at this stage is to take the heat down to low. Right, I'm just going to talk about the frying pan itself. I mentioned that Kate and I are both using a non-stick frying pan. Um, and most frying pans in this day and age do come with a non-stick coating. Um, if your frying pan isn't non-stick, I'm going to get you to put another little bit of oil in um, just before we add the eggs. Um, but with most modern frying pans, a second dose of oil isn't necessary. Um, and I don't choose to do it myself because, you know, the additional fat is not what a frittata is all about. It's not um, supposed to be an oily dish in any way whatsoever. And the eggs will uh, 
cook along quite happily without it. But if you're going to have to put it in because there's a chance that your eggs will stick, um, a small amount of oil is certainly more preferable than a frittata that will not come out of your pan. So if you were doing this with leftover food, say we've got our leftover tatty, so you'd yep. just obviously be frying them. Um, when you put your peas, would you then put your peas in at the same stage or just put the leeks in or would you put them in with the eggs? I would always put the peas in after the potatoes. The potatoes... Potatoes are going to take yeah, the longest, yeah. They're going to take the longest, so you want that brown... Yeah, and then yes. everything else would yes. go in after if we had leftover... Yeah. I always have leftover, like, roasty stuff. So mm -hmm. if I had leftover roast squash or something like that, I would yep. then... Or something like that, beetroot, yep. I could then... Yep. Stick it in yep. when we stick the leeks in. Okay. And, do you know, I mean, we talked about how this is a vegetarian dish. It doesn't necessarily have to be. Do you know, on a Monday night, you might have leftovers from your... Uh, you your might have wee bits that you might chicken want dinner. to add in. Yep. Yes. So, yes. But still tatties first and then yep. onto the rest yep. of it. Now, I was just checking to see if the, our tatties were actually cooked. I suspect people's at home's tatties are cooking a bit quicker than ours. They're certainly, they're certainly still quite fur on the firm side, some of them. So, But they will continue cooking when the eggs go in, won't they? They will. Uh-huh. Right, so it, it, yours is cooked. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe it's just. Yep. The leeks are going down nicely. Yep. Now, the leeks um, will get sweeter the longer that we cook them. Uh, Wimph is the word that I use. Say again. Wimph. I want, I want my leeks to woof. Okay. You want the life to, to look as if it's just fallen out of it. Ah, okay. Um, you know, you want it to have no ability to stand up in its its its, its entire its shape. Okay, so it needs to be more than wilted. More than wilted, more yes. More than wilted. Yes, but okay. we're not really looking to add colour to it. When you char a leek, you add a bitterness, which is delicious in some sets of circumstances, but it's not what we're looking for okay. here. Right, if we go back to our eggs, and as long as this is on a low heat... Okay. Yes, low. Oh, talking about peas. Peas, yes. If we're putting in frozen peas, mm -hmm. the frozen peas take the temperature of the entire oh, right pan down. right down. Yes, of course. So if you put frozen peas in, you need to bring the heat in the pan back up um, yeah, or yeah. you'll end up with cold peas. Yes, not, um, yeah, uh -huh. not and nice. It, your, your eggs will take forever to cook. Yeah. Okay, pepper. Pepper's a, per a personal choice. And what we'll probably find is that there's quite a bit of pepperiness to our homegrown leeks. Um, so again remember it's not just one portion here don't pepper it as though you're peppering um, your own bowl of soup you want quite a nice hefty dose yeah tatties are still browning aren't they okay thank you Sarah you're welcome That's my, my mixture okay. set to go. So all I'm waiting on now are my leeks. How are people doing time-wise at home? Is there, are people? Well, um, has, um, been very well received. Oh, has oh, it? Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, pot potato and peppers. I mean, it's a Spanish omelette. It's a classic, an absolute classic. Red peppers is just utterly delicious. In the end, anything you enjoy eating do you know if you're making this for yourself um if you like it just throw it on in there would you put so we've got so our flavorings really the we, we're relying on the veg would you ever put any other herbs or spices in? <gasps> yes yes okay. what, yes what, what might definitely you for? anything soft green and herbaceous okay, is so like i guess Mint would might be nice with the peas. Mint would be lovely with the peas. Um, I've in the summer done a tomato where you literally put the tomato in yep. in the pan, and just as as long uh, uh, until you've got the moisture off of it. Yes. Um, then throw in basil. Don't cook the basil. Oh, just get the eggs in on eggs top of it. Yes. Yeah, and that's a beautiful combination. Oh, okay. Yes, very summery. Yes. Um, and how about? So 
like yes. uh, pinto beans yes. or kidney yep. beans or yes. I like the, the littler beans. Anything, that you, would, beans, anything that you would put in a breakfast burrito oh, okay. actually is, is yeah. fantastic. Yeah, oh, I think I'm definitely getting there. I think my. Are you? Um, yeah, I think so. Because some of my leeks are starting to go a bit frazzled. Are they? Are they yeah. wimps? I, mean, I think they're w worn out, and, and I think they're worn out. They're do they like, just like sh like everybody on a Friday afternoon? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. If that's the case, if we want to start, Ross is laughing. Why are you laughing? Just <laughs> should, should I feel self conscious? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is where I go wrong with omelettes. I stir too much or don't stir enough. Or ah, right. See, there's a difference here because we're not making no, an omelette. No, no, omelet. yeah, yeah, we're we not. Are we're making a frittata. frittata. This is easier. Yes, much it's easier. Not go wrong. Much easier. Okay. Right. right. Okay, you want roughly to lay out okay. everything in the bottom so that you've got an even. Okay, yeah. But having said that, as soon as we start to pour in the egg, it's going to move. It's going to move. Okay. So we'll not overstress this, not overthink it. Yeah, okay. It's quite a lot of egg. It's quite a lot of egg, yeah. It's quite a lot of egg. Now, we'd put cheese optional. When If people were going to put cheese in, would they grate it into the egg mix or put it on the top? I would put it on the top. Okay. I would put it on the top, but... You could It's your it frittata. You could You could it put in. it in. And actually, peas and feta. Oh, is that nice? Peas and feta. And Does feta. the feta uh, melt? It, it, it softens, really? goes okay. slightly gooey. Right, I'm going to turn the heat up slightly. Okay, so I'm pouring this in. Yep. And I'm quite low heat. Oh, I'm not as low no, as you are. No, you've got... No, I'm not as it, low as you are. <laughs> um, and I'm not stirring or I am stirring? You actually are stirring. Oh, I am stirring. So you attack this in the first instance. And you said you turned yours up a bit. But I've maybe... turned it up a bit, yes, but yours but is definitely hotter so than much. mine. Okay. Right. So we're going to attack this at the beginning. It's like egg soup. Though we're making scrambled eggs. Okay. So, so we I'm start to move it. it. And... It's quite clear. I've got. Oh, you've got far more heat. Oh yes, I've got far more. Yes. Too much. Too much heat. <laughs> uh, no, not at the minute. We're stirring. Okay, so I can start to see my egg starting yes. to cook on the bottom. But what we really want to do mm -hmm. is, as soon as we start to see them cooking at the sides, we will take the heat down. Okay. I'm not really cooking at the sides yet. I've moved that nice, careful placement. <laughs> I know. I don't, know <laughs> I don't know why we bothered. Um, I am not in any part of my life a perfectionist, but there are some things that you kind of like. I, I kind of like to do, but for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just to ensure that there's enough. Yeah. There's enough potatoes, there's enough leeks, and that okay, so every bite will have some flavouring in it. Yeah, she don't want me to be the person yeah. with no tatties in it, do you? No. Right. Okay, it's getting to the point. Okay. See, I think you've gone past me now. I think yours is... Uh, but anyway, it will catch we're, up. Yeah. It will catch so up. So we're going to stop for a second. Okay. And what we're looking for is for the sides to start to cook. Okay. It's definitely a watch pot. It <laughs> is, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Right, I'm going to start making the motions because it's it's likely that there's going to be some of you at home whose sides have started to cook. So because of the depth of the frittata, the bottom will obviously cook far faster than the top. Um, oh, and one thing I haven't mentioned and I should have mentioned, if you've got a grill at home, if you want to turn the grill on, grilling the top of it is the fastest way oh so we're we're, we're, we're not we're oh, yes. not oh, all of a sudden yes all of a sudden I the sides cooked. um we obviously don't have a grill here at bannockburn house today um so i'll talk you through what to do if you've not got a grill or if, if it's more hassle than it's worth now what we're doing is just slowly scraping the sides down and ross if you can come in just for a second As you scrape the side down, you tip the raw egg into the space. Ah. Oh, yeah, I'm not quite at that stage, I don't think. I think our side, you can see it here. Look, can you see it there? Right. Yeah, it kind of scoots down it like scoops a down. volcano. Yes. Sort of. And you, you, you backfill, backfill and you with push a bit. Egg. Yes with raw egg that and you, you push the cooked egg more into the center. Okay, yeah, no, I'm... I'm now, I'm turning my heat down because actually I'm a wee bit concerned I'm going to scald the bottom. I'm hoping you've still got kind of moderate heats 
what we are probably suffering from is this breeze that's yeah. hitting the side of our pans. It makes quite a difference, doesn't it? It does. It's like camp cookery. Yes. So you want to start to tip your pan and just fill in. Now, I'm going to actually move to a spoon to just run it around the edge to get the start of a permanently shaped frittata. So we're back filling. Now, if I was in the house, I would take this in its entirety in that state and pop it under the grill to cook. But what I'm going to do is just keep trying to get as much of the uncooked egg filling in the spaces. around the edge. Now, if you don't have a grill, what I would recommend is you just turn the heat off. I've now got my heat off entirely. I have you. Yeah. And you've still got a wee bit of... of I'm still to on go. the... Uh, I'm going to yeah, turn yeah. your heat up a wee bit. I yeah. have overtaken you. You have, you have. Um, I had him to going to allow the steam from the rest of the frittata oh, that's a clever idea. to cook off the top. So if you have a lid, a lid would do it, um, but we don't. That's okay, I've just got to the point where I'm tipping the yeah. sides in. And that's what you want to be doing. Getting there. You are getting there. It's not far off. Oh yeah, the breeze is getting up, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's definitely a hotter side and a colder side. If you maybe just give it a minute without touching it at all. That old don't stir yeah, thing. Yeah, don't stir. So what would you have with your frittata? The perfect accompaniment is a vinegary dressed salad. Okay, yes, because that sounds a nice. salad with a vinaigrette. Yes, that sounds just lovely. Gonna Yep, pop the lid on here. Um, but do you know if you if you don't go for a, 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 a potato version, you could eat it with a baked potato. Oh yes, that sounds um, nice. You can also. I have I have put it on a roll. You put it on a roll. Uh -huh. Yes, <laughs> frittata on a roll. A fr frittata on a roll. Um, do you know? Lift it out of the fridge. I mean, you would eat an, a scrambled egg roll. You're right, I would. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I put it in wraps for a slightly oh, yes, a slightly yes. classier lunch. Yes. Okay. Um, Sounds nice. Yes. Well, that's going to be lunch yes. tomorrow for, for the gardeners. Yes. Um, but do you know you can eat it by itself. It's brilliant in a packed lunch. Mm -hmm. oh, I mean, it's, it? it's lovely warm, yes. but um, I, I prefer it cold. Yes. Yes. Um, and do you know the addition of the milk keeps the eggs nice and soft and gently cooked. Ah. So when you eat it tomorrow, it won't be rubbery. Yes. It it's will not just going to be sort of no, solid and no. yeah. It will be. How's it doing? It's it's getting oh, there. Yes. I'm just gonna. Yes, I can see uh, bits of. Uh... Yep. Just finish off. Yes, I can see why the grill would be kind of handy. Yes, the grill is really handy. And yes, cheese on top might just, if you've got a bit of cheese, just mm -hmm. to grate on top, that would be... Yes. That would be kind of nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Which then brings us to the, how do you get it out the pan? Oh, yes. That's a very important it is. bit. It is. Um, back on the yeah. Yeah. Now, now, I usually use a, a rubber spatula when I'm cooking mine. Um, we've obviously, we've used the wooden spoon today. Um... Can I add just a wee bit more heat because you can still see the the grill would finish off that yep. that egginess really nicely. Really nicely. Um, how are people getting on at home? Very good, they're enjoying it. They're saying it's looking good. Have we got people who've got it under the grill? Um, I'd imagine so. Um, have, uh, some folks saying they've used mushrooms. Oh. Quite adventurous with. Hey. Have they? Well, do you know, if, you, if, you've, if you've gone off script, you have to take a photograph. Yeah, we want to see a photo. Yeah. 
They want to see a photo. Oh, yeah, that's kind of... I might... Shall I turn it down a wee bit and put the lid back on? Is that yeah, the way to go? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the French are very much into eating their omelettes with just a little bit of... Uh, of soft egg in it, do you know? Yes, so I, know. I, I know. Some people are very unkeen on that. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. But we're verging on the point where I wouldn't be afraid to uh, to, eat, to eat it as it is. Um, but uh, I do know some people who are not keen on runny egg at all. Yes, yeah, it's snotty um, eggs. Snotty just not, not fun for them people. <laughs> I'm not a great fan of snotty eggs. So I'm maybe going to give this just a minute or two more. I've just had a wee peek at the bottom and we've okay. got a gorgeous colour. That we're, I'm not in the well, slightest bit concerned. I haven't looked at mine, but I think uh, mine. I think the bottom of mine might weirdly be a bit browner. Oh, yeah, no, it's a good colour. Yeah, well, it's brown. OK, can I give you the yes. spatula? Yes. Just to run around the outside, okay. to just tidy up the edge. So hopefully everybody who joined us this week is going to join us next week we could briefly say uh, give us you know come back and join us mm -hmm. for our next cook along next week yep which is going to be here again yes. <laughs> in the same spot hopefully with the same sunshine but something entirely different but again with a bit of a mediterranean twist there is there, a bit of a mediterranean yes yes yeah. i mean we're, we're going to cook with carrots which are obviously um they're very Scottish and we have them growing here in and the garden. Scotland is a great carrot producer. Yes, any kind of root veg. But um, yeah. it's actually more kind of Persian spices that we're going for. We're going ah, for okay, rather wee, than Mediterranean. Uh, yes, a wee bit of okay. cumin in uh, next week's uh, with some chilli flakes, yes. which will be included in the pack. Um, yes. You don't need to stress if you don't own them. Yep. Um, but it's essentially a, a carrot bruschetta. And bruschetta, I think traditionally people always imagine um, tomatoes. Yes. yes. Yes, which is obviously Mediterranean, yes. but um, no, we're going we're going toasted crusty bread with uh, and some nice garlicky greens. Garlicky greens. Garlicky greens. Garlicky greens. Yeah. Ah, so it will be signing up at the same email address as this week, which I'm going to ask have to ask Ross for help with, which yes, is sign up at bannockburnhouse.scot. Sign up at .scot. So that's exactly the same way as you did for this one. I've had someone else asking, uh, is it done when uh, your eggs are most snotty? Is it done for me? Yes, yes definitely. Yes. Do you know I... what? It's done when the eggs look how what you would consider delicious. Yeah, so, so I would know... eat what I've got now. It's still a little bit snotty in there, but we do not have a grill. So yes. I, I'm pretty unsure that we'd get it all totally cooked. Oh, yours is? That's yes, mine is getting there. It's, it's patience. It's yes, patience. It patience. It's patience, guys. Yes. Definitely. Yep. Right. And a lid. Okay. Getting it out of the frying okay, pan yes. is the next thing. So the easiest thing actually is if you have a plastic spatula. Yep. Um, the wooden spoon is just a little bit chunky. chunky. Yeah. Yep. Um, so if you don't have a plastic spatula. Now these dirty ones, are you going to go for a clean one? I'm going to go for a clean one. Yeah. So I'll just put these inside. If I give you that one. Thank you very much. And this away. Now, the heat is off. Um, we've worked out that the edge is all free. Yep. Um, I'm starting just to check underneath. And Ooh, I'm not. nice colour. I'm not hitting any resistance. And, um, was that resistance? That was resistance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so oh, look at that. It's, it's, it's moving. It's moving. It's moving. So I think I'm quite happy. Yeah. Are you just going to slide it? I'm going to slide it. it. <gasps> oh, look at that. Wow. And there we go. Oh, I'd eat that. Now, if, um, and this is a wee reward for me. I feel like um, we should have had some parsley to put over the top. Um, mm -hmm. If you hit resistance and it's not going to come out, um, what a frittata does do is produce steam. Okay. And you can see there's plenty of it coming yes, off here. Yes, yes. So if you just leave it in your frying pan, if you don't have a non-stick pan that's quite as good, as fresh, as freshly non-stick non as that, as yes. that um, if you leave it for two or three minutes, the steam will start to unlock any bits that are stuck. Ah, okay. Um, 
But there we go. Okay, shall I so are you going to... And then we can hopefully... Hopefully everybody is towards, thank you very much, the same... Uh, that was all right. Gorgeous coloured underneath. Is it? I can't really see that. Okay, let's see. Da da da! Oh! Well done! <laughs> oh, see, you I, can't, yeah, I no, can't, no, no, can't, no, no, none of that. Can't come to <laughs> none you. of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we can't. That's a real shame. I know. But we can enjoy our frittatas. So, we can. You know, we're just going to have to. We have to go with that instead. Right. So I will give you uh, another plate. I still have the butter. I'm going to go to the. Uh, right. Wow, Yeah, it's looking good. Mm. Let's get your fresh fork. Okay. Yeah, I've just got a mucky one. Thank you. There we go. Mm, well, it's got a taste now. Okay. Let me know what you think about salt. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I think it tastes better also for being outside. Uh -huh. And it's warm and we're cold. <laughs> and it's warm and we're cold. <laughs> no, that's, that's really nice. I feel a bit like Rick Stein or somebody like that, you know. Mm. Mm. We need the wine to be Rick Stein. Oh, yes. oh. Mm. Well... I hope that everybody else's is as yummy as ours and you're going to enjoy Bannock Burn House, Tatties, Leeks and Eggalicious mm. eggs for your tea and uh, Sarah's scooping just, in. I mean, <laughs> I do, I do really, really enjoy a leek and potato frittata, but those potatoes... Tatties are really good, actually. Yeah, they it, are they? really, yeah. Just goes to show picking, sometimes I think you picking forget how, good ingredients yes. are really key. It would be under shadow of a doubt. You know, the eggs are just gorgeous. Eggless as eggs always are. Yeah. Um, but yes, it makes a huge, fresh, it fresh make potatoes. A huge difference. Fresh ingredients. Doesn't yeah. It? Yes. Uh, yes. So, if anybody's got any questions um, or struggling with anything, we can answer them. We're here for a few minutes more. But otherwise, uh, we are looking forward to seeing you same time, same place next week. And if you didn't sign up for this one, then do um, drop us an email. Sign up at bannetburnhouse.scot. And we will look forward to seeing you next week. And look, we're even gonna we're gonna feed. We're gonna feed Ross as well. We are. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, enjoy your dinner. Enjoy. Thanks for joining us. Bye bye. bye.